Ember is really rough. So Ember got nerfed forever ago, and they removed World on Fire, which makes it very hard to justifiably play her in any contents anymore. Um, obviously this is from my personal experience. Uh, I have done some test builds, like the ones I'll be showing here. But overall, the efficient efficiency and how effective she is has plummeted extremely. First off, she has two LOS checks. One of them doesn't even make sense and really shouldn't even be thought about. And the other one gets stuck on Blades of Grass, which is Fire Blast, which is really good because it synergizes with her kit, obviously with Immolation. But she also has her one, which just sucks. And I've assumed that off in two of the builds that I'll be showing here. And also Inferno, which was World on Fire's replacement, is probably one of the hardest abilities to justifiably use. There are some plus sides about this, though. We do have the new uh, Precision Intensify, which is what I'm running on this because it is a 90% bonus to your fourth ability, which means it can make her work pretty well. Not justifiably well, though. So, um, general purpose, I run this on pretty much both builds. Uh, Transient Fortitude, Prime Continuity, Augur Reach, Precision Intensify, Archon Vitality, Flow, Augur Secrets, Exothermic. The only difference is on my A slot, I run Natural Talent with Nourish, and on my B, I run Augur Secrets with Roar, because Roar buffs ability damage, plus is overall a really, really good um, damage bonus for really any weapon you choose. Her passive gives her 5% ability strength for every enemy engulfed in flame within 50 meters, which basically powers up her 4 even more, so yeah. Precision Intensify is really, really, really good on her, just for the flat 90% bonus, so we have 179 plus 90. That's simply really, really good for specifically that. But the reason she's really rough nowadays is because if you can take a guess what LOS check her 4 is, you get a cookie. Uh, I guess I have to be closer. So it was hitting through the wall, but also everybody in front of me. That's because it's not a LOS check, it's an are you looking at them on screen check. So you can feasibly do this and hit everybody here. Like I saw a pixel of this guy and it killed him, which is frustrating because no other LOS check works like that. Everything either hits through a wall or does not. So, it's it's so nonsensical. It's such a weird check. But we're running Roar, because Roar buffs ability damage uh, against opponents. I talked about it in my Banshee video. I, like, mischaracterized how I meant to say it, though. But it's really good on Ember, because her entire bread and butter is spamming her 3 and 4. Uh, you want to keep Immolation up as long as you can. Obviously, using your 4 will build its charge, and then Fire Blast will dismiss it. Uh, the higher on the charge you are, the um, higher armor strip that it, uh, Fire Blast does. So, it's really, really good for that. Especially because it gives you damage resistance uh, up to 90%, which late game can be kind of okay, um, again, shield gaining is like our entire bread and butter for late game, so. But I also run Nourish on her because her augment, Exothermic, lets enemies drop, uh, has a chance of them dropping energy orbs on hit for her form. Which allows her to pretty much become a free energy farm if you're lucky enough to have the percent chance. It's always good to note that it is a percent chance of it doing that. Ember's in a really rough spot uh, because they kind of just hard nerfed her and then made every frame do what she does but better. Also with a less dog shit uh, line of sight check. Uh, excuse my wording on that. It's very frustrating. But overall, 
she's not that bad. You can get away with it. Like, I've gotten away with using her. It's just, you're relying a lot less on, like, the fact that she's a damage frame, and you're relying a lot more on the fact that she has a guaranteed, like, stagger. A really good thing about Inferno is this instantly hits people with heat, so it will stagger them. Yeah, not for very long, as you saw here. But also, Fire Blast is a guaranteed knockdown on any enemy that it doesn't have overguard or is not immune to it. So, it's very good for, you know, knocking. I talked about it in uh, the Loki video. It's a really good get-off-me card. You just press it and it drops, and they get knocked down. The, the, and the, main, the main problem with Ember is that she has two abilities that are tied to line of sight checks. Fire Blast has just a general are they in the circle area? But if a portion of them isn't typically their torso, if they're like half in cover, normally it doesn't affect them, which is very frustrating for an ability that has a decent lock-in. It costs a bunch of energy because it's 75 costs unless you use efficiency. And also... It burns your gauge, so if you have high gauge, you just have to spam this ability to get it lower. Obviously, the emulation gauge is good, however, because it increases the amount of damage this does. And, yeah. Obviously, we're using uh, Archon Vitality here, because Archon Vitality has the effect of doubling heat status effects on enemies. But it's still... Her kit is still very, very rough. Her F1 is definitely her most assumable ability by far, because it's just a dumb projectile. Kind of like a Necros' Soul Punch, um, except at least that has a really good augment. Necros' Soul Punch has the Insta-Res player augment for no cost because they removed that additional cost where if you res a player with it it would cost the entire bar it doesn't do that anymore but her one is a fireball that deals extremely low damage doesn't really help you do anything it doesn't even really synergize with her kit itself you can spam it and it increases its damage but why spam it on the one when you can drop fire blast and then just use an explosive weapon and kill everything in the area or even good single shot weapons i use the kuva crack because i love the gun even though it's not that good the problem a lot of like testing and playing her comes down to is how sustainable is she in like higher tier content which when everybody's bombing everything, you're basically just wasting energy spamming Fire Blast and your 4 and all that kind of stuff. She's still very playable, but it is also very difficult to justify bringing her in on missions when there's just unir like, unironically better frames. Goss has a really good AoE clear. Citrine has a really good AoE clear that doesn't have a line of sight check and deals multiple status effects very rapidly. Gara has no line of sight check on what basically is room clears on lower tier content. Um, Hildren is okay, mainly because her kit, like, her four doesn't really do much to really, like, contradict the, the statement that Ember was given. But, like, other frames just do what she do. She does. She do. She does better. And... The unfor <laughs> Unfortunately, Volt is also another one of the frames that should have gotten nerfed when she did. Hot take. Why does her four have a n absolutely necessary line of sight check, but Volt's doesn't? And Volt hasn't been touched. At least they've only done quality of life on him, but Ember completely lost World on Fire. And instead of tuning it or adjusting it to be more in line with the abilities of the day, which I'm not saying World on Fire was healthy for the game. It definitely wasn't, but it wasn't healthy for the game that it was back then. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. World on Fire wasn't healthy when the game was completely different and every frame had a niche role. One of the more... I... Uh, Shout out to the YouTuber that uses Loki as his, like, little persona. It's really, he's, he made a really good video on the fact that somebody asked for a Loki rework, and their response was, well, we can't make them into a damage nuker frame, 
So how would we rework them? And that's the problem, is every frame that's been coming out has damage nuking potential. Corvex does. Calervo does. Like, Dagoth does, even though people don't really commonly play her. Like, every frame that has... Like, Urelli's a really good example. She's not a damage nuker, and she requires at least a little bit of investment. Granted, she's been heavy, heavy, heavy buffed for a while now. But... She wasn't a damage nuker frame, so people didn't play her. Grendel was kind of the same way. Grendel just has a unique interaction with everything. So, yeah, he didn't get a lot of favor when he came out. Granted, Nourish got hella buffed, and people were like, well, it's really good. So they started playing him. Lavos is one of those frames that suffers because his kit is just way too clunky. And it's this, just, it's a repeated story. You get one after a frame after another after another zaku is probably one of the most brainless frames in the game it just requires you to know what you're doing and then the entire game plays itself which is frustrating so yeah um if you want to try playing ember i mean these builds get me pretty far in endless survivals and defenses and stuff like that it's just it's tedious because you are playing micromanagement simulator while your teammates are just kind of standing there killing everything while you just have to worry about a bar filling up that determines whether or not you deal damage or not. So that's the current state of Ember. It's rough, and there is so many fundamental issues with her, her getting nerfed so long ago that still haven't been resolved because she just, oh, well, they fixed her. She's no longer killing everything on the map. Now everybody else is doing it, and now she can't even try to. So... She's good because of the huge AoE, fire damage, and just, like, a good armor strip and a very subsumable one that you can subsume nourish, roar, even weapon buffs like clips and anything like that. But the problem is, is fundamentally, unless you're high investing, which isn't a problem, I high invested in Zirelli. I have four guns that I form a how many times for her. But the problem is, is... Ember is one of the frames that shouldn't be this high investment. It's kind of like Loki, where Loki has a super, super niche role, and when asked, hey, can we have this fixed? The response was no, because it wouldn't be fair to make them do a ton of damage. That's not what the question was. The question was, hey, can we have our character fixed? Because they are artifacted beyond what we should have in this game. The same thing happened with Inaros, and now Inaros got a pretty good sizable buff. I'm not an Inaros player, so I can't really, like, comment on how good that buff is, but when I looked at that patch notes, and I was like, wow, they actually, like, managed to help him? Maybe we can get that for Loki, maybe we can get it for Ember, maybe we can get it for other struggling frames. But until then, it's extremely difficult to justify playing them. Like, even playing Loki was a stretch. Like, I know I made a meme about, like, oh, Loki is good as Ko. He's good, but why play him? There's other better frames that don't get just artifacted by Overguard or enemies that are just completely ignored. Like, Netracells and Santa Sanctum Anatomica itself artifacts all of Loki, because Loki does nothing in those. He doesn't disarm them. He barely stuns them. Like... When do we actually go back and fix these characters that used to be really good, but then just get hard artifacted because they're like, we don't want that kind of game anymore? That's the question.